Jim, thank you. Strong results. What do you think are the key factors driving the growth for IMAX in China? Hi, Tom. Thanks so much. Uh, look, I mean, I think at the end of the day, uh, IMAX has been making uh, been making a lot of steps to uh, try and eventize movies. I mean, we do a lot of things with cameras. We do a lot of things with marketing. We do a lot of things with technology. We're an end-to-end -end cinematic solution, and the purpose is to basically make a blockbuster an even bigger blockbuster and we want people to see movies in IMAX and experience them in IMAX when they go out of their homes and we've consistently performed that way and you know the results speak for themselves um, this half year as you said box office at a record up 24 percent you know in mainland China in RMB terms we're actually up 35 percent record net income um, you know overall we're very very pleased not just kind of on the results but also how consistently we've been performing across a whole slew of blockbuster films, both Hollywood and actually local films as well. Give us an update on the expansion plans then. You've got about 600 theatres now in mainland China. How many do you expect to have by the end of 2019? We talked about your partnership with CGV. How central is that to pushing ahead here? Yeah, I mean, I think CGV is uh, our number two partner in China. I think number you know, one of our biggest partners globally as well. Um, you know, CGV is uh, going to be rolling out theaters in uh, tier one and tier two cities with us with our new um, laser projection technology. It's an incredible offering for consumers. Um, so, you know, we have 298 theaters currently in backlog, both CGV and other partners as well. So, you know, we've got a healthy backlog and, uh, you know, a nice runway for growth overall. We expect to install you know, roughly 90, uh, 90 to 95 installations this year. So, um, you know, again, with the backlog, with the new technology and with our performance, um, we've got some runway for growth and we're looking forward to continuing to execute on that plan. Are you looking to, to expand that tie up with, with CGV and any other markets, Jim? Um, you know, right now we operate um, globally with uh, CGV in Korea, in China, um, in Vietnam in Turkey and a few other markets as well. So, uh, and they operate IMAX theaters in all those particular markets. So, you know, right now we're, we're focused on China, uh, but we have arrangements with CGV globally. So, uh, you know, to the extent they've embraced and, you know, and taken our technology and, and worked with it and seen what it is that we can offer, uh, you know, we're looking forward to a kind of expanding with them globally as well. Jim, you, you talk to any executive of, of a business, of a big business, multinational business in China, and sort of the consistent message that, well, at least I tend to get, is that they're, they're not growing as fast as they want to. How does that apply for IMAX? What are your biggest constraints to growth on the mainland? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we've been growing at a fairly steady pace, um, you know, over the last number of years. I, I think, as I mentioned beforehand, what's important for us is to offer you know, the best technology, which is what we do with our new laser projector. You know, we offer a premium of experience. Um, you know, we, we do things to the image that actually is going into the theater. We could use our cameras. We could use our DMR technology to, you know, up res the, the image that's actually going into the theater so it looks even better in an IMAX format. So, you know, we've been very, very focused on maintaining a level of differentiation throughout the process. And, you know, as a result, we've had a steady stream of signings and, uh, you know, a steady performance on right. films and steady, um, and steady rollout of theaters. And, you know, right now we're at about 660 theaters open. Like I said, 298 theaters in backlog. And, you know, based on the new technology and the, and the performance that we've had recently, um, you know, even after all of this expansion, um, you know, people are still embracing IMAX and choosing to get out of their homes and watch movies in IMAX. Right. And there's so many changes going on in the box office in China as well. I'm just wondering, what are your expectations on, on the government in terms of raising the targets for the number of foreign films mm. that are screened in China? And to what extent does, does IMAX growth depend on whether we get more or less of these foreign films? Um, so, you know, right now, uh, 34 quota films um, get into China each year. There's also some flat fee films that get in as well. Overall, last year, I mean, we're focused not only on Hollywood films, which we perform exceptionally well on, of course, but also on local language films. So last year, I believe we released around 45 films. Um, you know, we have one screen for Complex. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's a number of films. And, and, um, and, and again, most of the blockbusters actually get into China as well that are coming over from Hollywood. So, you know, up until now, um, you know, we've had a steady flow of content from Hollywood and also a steady flow of content 
of local language and you know we're focused on that we're focused on the blockbusters and and um, mm. you know and, and up until now the delivery of them has been um, acceptable um, to sort of driving our business going forward and that's sort of reflected in the number of theaters that we've signed and obviously the number the install base and the new theaters that are coming up uh, Jim, final question. So you guys are out with earnings. I'm looking at your balance sheet. Our data at least suggests that you're very light on debt. Your CFO, is that on purpose? And you have plans to borrow a little bit more? Uh, no, no, no plans right now. I mean, uh, our, 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 our business generates healthy cash flow. Uh, we're continuing to focus on growing our network and growing our business and making investments in that regard. We've made other strategic investments to sort of grow our business and our core business. Um, you know, and we're going to continue to do that. It offers us some flexibility and some firepower to kind of make uh, decisions that make sense. And we'll continue to do that with the cash balance that we have. And, um, you know, I, I think we're, we're, we're comfortable right now with where we're at. We're paying a dividend. We've been buying back shares. So at this point in time, we're pretty uh, comfortable with where we're at from a cash flow perspective.